<clears throat> the views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. Well then, Bunny, let's talk about books. You let's. see, people always say, hey, Steve, how do you keep your sanity in a house with seven people in it? To which I say, it helps if you never had any to begin with. <laughs> people also say, hey, Write what you know, and what I know is that I've been a loyal, if not at all suspicious, employee at my local bookstore for 17 years now. Officially, yes. 17 years. In retrospect, I should have started other things in the year 2000, so it would be easy to remember how long I did them. <laughs> I should have uh, uh, become a, a, a bird watcher, or maybe did crack. Something yeah. else. So that, oh, wow, Steve, how long have you been doing crack? Oh, exactly 17 years. <laughs> what year is it? 2017? Oh, I've been a crackhead for 17 years. It's just easier to remember things this way. Yes. Uh, people also, uh, it's how long? And as such, that's where I am. And as such, I really do have my fingers on the pulse of the book world. And I am here to rub my knowledgeable fingers down the down your spine with another <laughs> unforgettably forgettable installment of notes from the bookstore notes from the bookstore is proud to introduce the all new notes from the bookstore glowing blacklight e-reader 5 <laughs> Brand new e-reader specifically designed to make it seem as if we're not in dire financial problems. The NFTB Glow Blacklight 6 is slightly different and more expensive. Buy yours now at your local bookstore. <laughs> so, last week, we had an unscripted discussion about my job as receiving manager and how ridiculously remarkably challenging it is right now. Yes. Basically, the gist of it, like the Cliff Notes, but we don't carry Cliff Notes. We have our own brand. So the Sparks Notes version of it uh -huh. is that the suits at corporate have decreed that this holiday season, basically no store is allowed to be out of anything. Okay. So, so hey, Steve, here's 25 copies of Bonfire of the Vanities for you. All right. Why? You might sell. Well, you might say you can't be out of it. What if a bunch of people come in looking for Bonfire of the Vanities? You can't be out of it. Then they'll go to the Internet. We can't let them have go to the Internet, Steve. So you <laughs> have to have a lot of everything. Okay. Copies of every Ken Follett book, <laughs> and you know that you know that teen series from six years ago that no one gives a crap about anymore. Here's 32 copies of all four titles. So, so my life has become a stressful uh, live action game of Tetris. Yeah, it's a live action Tetris game. It is stressful and depressing. So, stress pressing. Yes. Stress, stress, pressfuling, maybe. So I have an insane amount of crap that's coming into the store through my receiving area. So then I set it up to be put out on the floor by shelvers. But um, I hardly have anyone to shelve. Yeah. Because the hours are being spent on in our receipt in in, in the, the cash wrap and on the floor helping people and trying to actually get at least one good secret shop, uh -huh. so no one is 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 shelving the stuff. So I'm the receiving manager as well as the shelver. So I'm trying to work twice, three times as hard as I normally do, so that I can have time to shelve. So yeah. everything is getting bottlenecked. 
because now it's getting to be the actual holiday. So I'm getting 120, 130, 155 plus boxes a day. So I don't have the time to shelve anymore. So everything is just getting bottlenecked in my section. And it's a live action game of Tetris and it sucks. <laughs> It's it's gotten to be I have become dependent on gum. Yeah. Because I saw some life hack thing somewhere where some meme or website or something told me that if you're stressed, the best thing you can do is chew gum because your body says, oh, hey, look, we're we are making a chewing motion with our mouths. Guys, this is a, the brain speaking and we're making a chewing motion. We must eat. So we can't be depressed because we're sitting down and eating food, I'm assuming. So uh-huh. let's pump your body full of good uh, uh, toxins or whatever. Let's pump your body full of good vibes, good mood enhancers because you're eating so it's gotten to the point where i basically at work i am living on caffeine and trident layers the flavor i have to have gum also i learned that the supermarket by my house sells big league chew Uh uh-huh very excited about that love that stuff (laughs) love that stuff so things are piling up in my world, last week we got 700 plus boxes, a crazy ton of stuff for one stressed out person. Yeah. You know? And okay, what makes this holiday even worse, though, that I didn't mention last week, what makes this holiday even worse is the madness that is our clearance sale. Yeah. Because the old way was, hey, let's have clearance. Here's a section where we'll put our clearance stuff, and it's all 50% off for the next three weeks, three and a half weeks. Then we'll make it 75% off. And it'll be 75% off for about a good two weeks. And then we'll make it $2 for about four days, and whatever's left, we're getting rid of. But then during spring clearance, which we talked about at length here on the podcast, yes, uh, suits at corporate said, we're going to do something different. We're going to uh, change things up. So in the beginning, uh, cl- our clearance sale is going to be 2% off for three years. <laughs> and then it's going to be 4% off. And hopefully by 2035, we'll be at 50% off. And so that was a huge mistake and people, customers were pissed and people just weren't buying clearance. And we had way too much clearance, a ridiculous amount of clearance on the positive side. My kids' Christmas is going to be fucking amazing. (laughs) Hey, guess what? Everybody's getting the Secret Life of Pets Funko Pops. Hooray! (laughs) So... So uh, they corporate knew that they screwed up clearance and the way they did it was just way wrong. So they did one positive thing and one negative thing. The positive thing was, okay, we realized we did clearance wrong in spring clearance. So fall clearance, we're going to do it normal. We're going to start out 50 percent off. We 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 did too cheap before and we messed that up. So we're going back to our normal way of doing things. And that's a good thing. And then what they did was. Since we're finally going back to our new thing, people are going to be super excited. So you're going to be selling more clearance now that we're going back to the regular way. So FYI, we are prepared for the massive amount of clearance every store is going to sell. We're sending you five times more clearance than we ever have before. Uh Uh-huh. So there are stores... Uh, they they overdid it on the amount of clearance that because because there's stuff in the store that you make clearance. But then also we get sent boxes that say hold for future clearance. And so we have to put these boxes in receiving somewhere. Oh, these are just future receiving stuff. We'll just keep these boxes in the back here. But they thought that receiving would be such a huge hit this time. We need to send you a ridiculous amount of receiving. And I have seen pictures because I am in a closed Facebook group of other receivers. I have seen pictures of mountains of clearance, insane amounts of clearance stores that just got sent. Like like they like we're about to go 75 percent and there's still stores out there with 200 boxes of clearance in the back 
So it's like that a clearance storm. Open. Yes. Like yes. when there's a big snowstorm, everybody starts taking pictures of their driveway and stuff so you can see how much snow. Yeah, it sounds like a clearance storm, and you're, and you're seeing yeah. mountains of snow, which is clearance. I am really hoping that we don't get hit by a tornado, because if we do, it's a clearance NATO. It's a clearance NATO, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I will need the help of Finn Shepard for this. <laughs> Without a doubt, we need to find Finn Shepard. Yes. Semper Paradis. So, there are stores out there that are really suffering right now. Not only are, are these stores like me, they don't have shelvers, they don't have people that are shelving the product. So they have a massive amount of boxes that they can't open. On top of that, they have a massive clearance mountain that they can't put out because people aren't buying clearance as much as corporate thought they did. So there are stores out there whose back rooms are literally just imagine a corn maze, <laughs> but it's a corn maze of boxes that are, that's most people's clearance. And one of the worst stores out there when it comes to boxes is a store in OKC in Oklahoma city. They are, they were so backlisted and they were, they were so bad and they had so many mountains and they had so much stuff that they couldn't put out on the floor that they didn't have, have help. That some corporate people came into town to check on the store in Oklahoma City. Uh-huh. Now, and just to be clear, these people aren't, weren't suits. These were execs, uh-huh. which, which is the Pokemon evolution of a suit. You know how it's Pikachu, and then a Pikachu evolves into Raichu. It's Charmander, and then Charmeleon, and then Charizard, which is the big, tall, popular one. So when it comes to a bookstore, the evolutions are bookseller, then lead bookseller, then manager, then store manager, then suit, and then executive. So I have actually climbed pretty high. I went from bookseller to lead to manager, and that's where I've stayed. Uh Uh-huh. But it goes bookseller, lead, manager, store manager, suit, exec, and then there's CEO, which is like the the Mewtwo, the Mew. Yes. The legendary Pokemon <laughs> of the bookstore world. So these were suits. These weren't suits, these were execs that came in. They so they just they were so Brooklyn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 33 years old, rich person from Brooklyn or some really nice place in New Jersey. Yeah. Horn rim glasses. Just imagine any member of the band Arcade Fire or Mumford and Sons. <laughs> Okay. That are, that those those were the execs that came in, young, stylish. They came in to fix everything. They came in because that's how bad the OKC store was. Execs came in, and their solution was, "This is what we're gonna do. We've, we, you know, we, we don't do this, but we are giving you more hours. So this is what we're going to do. We are going to call other stores in." the state stores nearby and offer them your hours. Okay. So, so there were, so we would get a call and it would be an executive from the company at this store in Oklahoma city talking to our store manager wanting to know if there were any employees they could give that we could give up for the day to go to the this other store in another city and help them with their problems that's how bad that store was okay that the manager comes along and says who wants to go and work at the Oklahoma City store today That's people would have to volunteer. 
Yeah. For yeah. a job that's days, gonna suck. There were days last week when we had one or two or three less employees in the store because they were working at the Oklahoma City store dealing with their problems. Huh. So if anything, that makes my success last week because I got over 700 boxes and by the end of the week I only had like a, like a very small amount left in the receiving area. That makes my success even better. I had we had less people. Yes. And I still managed to to keep the receiving area looking good and looking nice. So so it just makes my success that much better. So this is what happened. The suits were there for like two or three days trying to basically save the store from the avalanche that happened. Okay. And so the execs uh, are like, okay, so like it's been three days of hard work and like literally our store manager had to leave our store to help another store. That makes my store feel so much better, you know? Yeah. Like sometimes you worry like, oh, is my store doing good? Is my store doing bad? Are we failing? Oh, wait, executives from New Jersey have shown up to help another store. Oh, well, we don't need help. So I guess, oh, wait, suddenly we're looking real damn good right now, aren't we? (laughs) Yes. It's like, oh, suddenly we're the good successful ones. Hooray for us. So the executives, they spent three hard days helping this store out and afterwards they said well you know we're we're finally going to be leaving back to the home office tomorrow maybe we should look at some other stores maybe we should uh yeah you know what let's take a lunch and then when we're done with the lunch we'll go to a store and so we were given five minutes warning okay that three top level corporate executives were in the store <laughs> like like five minutes before they sh- they walked into the store we were told like okay okay hi this is the district manager i just learned okay so these three high level uh executives are on their way to the store right now they are almost there <laughs> you need to be ready for them they are gonna want to do a tour of the store they want to see how everything is and so they came in, and me being me, I'm like, okay, I it's it's been a horrible week. I've I've had over 700 boxes. This is really difficult, and I'm trying to unbury myself. Uh-huh. So let me just try and time this right. Okay, so they're going through the fiction section. They're checking out the cafe. Okay, that's good. Now where are they? Oh, they're checking out kids. Oh, and receiving is right next to kids. Let me wait about. 10 minutes into their trip through the children's department. And now's a good time to go on lunch. (laughs) So I timed my lunch specifically so that I didn't have to talk to the execs. I don't even like suits, let alone execs, you know? Uh And the reason why I don't like talking to suits and execs and stuff like that is because I become Jekyll and Hyde. (laughs) Like, I I am a pretty smart-ass guy, but I work hard. I got a bit of a mouth. I try and make things light and breezy. I'll, I talk. I, you know, I try and, you know, keep it real and talk how, you know, bring the truth to the conversation. But you put a suit or an executive in front of me, I turn into the whitest fucking guy imaginable. <laughs> and I just, I suddenly the corporate speak just flows through me and I become like a, like a corporate Jekyll and Hyde. Oh <laughs> man, works freaking sucks today. And uh, Oh, hi, how are you doing? My name is Steve. I've been working with the corporation for 17 years now. I'm the manager in charge of receiving. I work hard and I love my job. Let's talk <laughs> about numbers. And I just, I hate it. Yeah. I hate it. So they, They did a tour of receiving. I wasn't there, but what I was later told, I got a pat on the back and I was given a coffee mug that said, you rock by our store manager. They said the executives said they have seen hundreds and hundreds of really bad stores this year. And they've seen some pretty good stores too, but they had never seen a receiving area look this good during the holiday. 
they were so blown away that they they got their cameras and they were taking pictures to see it how they could study how I did everything, how I laid everything out, and to see how they can recreate this for other stores. Nice, very nice. To see if they can teach other stores how to have a receiving area like mine. And so that's good, and that was really great for me, and everyone was really proud of me, and I saved the day, and I'm a hero, and I everyone's blown away by how good I work. But then, like, it, it, while everyone's praising me, I said, okay. It, when the execs left, I said, okay, I'm glad that uh, I have the best receiving area in the company. Look, these are my demands. <laughs> I need a jacuzzi in the receiving area. Uh huh. Reasonable. Also need a also need a flat screen TV. And you know all the bargain books we have in receiving. We need to get rid of those and put a dressing room for me. <laughs> because if I have the best receiving store, the receiving area in the entire company, suddenly I have a lot of bargaining chips up my sleeves. <laughs> So this is my list of demands. I will also need nude photos of B. Arthur. You see this cup, damn it? You see it? It says I rock. I rock. It doesn't say you rock. It <laughs> says me. So that's that's been my week uh, last week. This week, I, I swear, this week I swear that somehow the distribution center who sends me the boxes heard that I had a receiving area that looked so nice. So yeah. they said, oh, Steve, hey, I heard you have the nicest receiving area. Isn't that interesting? Would be a shame if something happened. Here's 210 boxes. <laughs> you have a fun week now, Steve. Yeah. Steve. <laughs> so I, I, I'm trying really hard not to be buried this week. It's literally like someone heard I did good and are trying to punish me now. It's very possible. It's very, very, very possible that that happened, but I'm trying. You know who I blame? Tim Burton. Probably. Uh I'm trying real hard, Ringo. I'm trying really hard to beat the shepherd. (laughs) And that is it from Notes from the Bookstore this week. And remember, gang, you too can save 10% on all of your purchases. And all you have to do is just fucking buy 10% less crap. <laughs> Real simple. Real dang simple. And a cut on that. Cut. <laughs>